All right, in this video we're going to show how we might be able to use this new Tektronix mixed domain oscilloscope to diagnose a transient EMI emissions problem with a pin of circuit board here. So I've got the spectrum analyzer on here. We're using this little near field probe. Uh, this is a call it an H-field probe. It's a little magnetic loop. These are available in different sizes from different manufacturers. This one happens to be from Electrometrics, but there's a lot of other nice ones uh, made by companies like Beehive Electronics and a number of other folks. So the nice thing about this is that you can kind of use this to kind of zoom around on your board and look for issues. So for, if you just take a look at the, the spectrum analyzer here as I kind of probe around, I can see well over in this area of the board I've got a lot of broadband kind of digital noise. You see all the little spikes in there kind of indicated probably some kind of a data pattern or digital pattern, high speed data or whatever, or clock. If I come around to different areas of the board, as I kind of scroll around, you can see different areas coming in. And the thing that kind of caught my eye was if I lay the probe right down in about here, okay, uh, let's see, right about there, I've got this little spiky little thing that's popping up right here. It's moving about 10, 10 to 15 dB and popping up every once in a while. And maybe you're in a situation where signals below this level are okay, but when this thing kind of pops up there, that causes a problem. So we can actually use some of the tools available here with this MDO uh, to kind of try to isolate that issue. And if we get lucky, we might even be able to trigger on that and then to go looking around on the board. So let's set up and trigger on. Try and see if we can do an RF power level trigger on that thing. Since that's increasing by more than 10 dB, we've got a halfway decent shot at doing that. So we can go into the trigger menu. And I can do an edge level trigger. Right now the edge trigger is looking for something on channel 1, but I can actually change that to show RF power. So if I were to use RF power as my trigger source, so let's go down to RF power as my trigger source. Okay, And uh, I'm going to change the spectrum analyzer to, to change from running free run to triggered. So now that I'm triggered, now, I've, now I'm seeing that high level power here consistently on the spectrum analyzer. Now I've got a, I, you know, I can go see what's going on maybe in some other other domains. So what I can do is take a look at what's going on in this board and maybe probe around with a probe to see what's happening. So I'll add channel one, but before I even do that, let's, uh, let's go see what we can learn just from doing a simple time correlated capture here. So I just do a single little capture. So right now, there is that peak I'm interested in, and that's occurring at this point in time with respect to, I'm just looking at kind of a ground signal on channel one here but I can move the spectrum time and if I move this across we can see that peak is going away see how that peak went down about 10 dB from as I scroll this thing across as I keep scrolling okay you're gonna see that peak come back up again okay there it is Oop, I just went right past it let's bring it back up here so let's go back a little bit there it is that peak popped up right again there in time so between these two points in time I've got this, this spike popping up I actually kind of already set up some cursors to kind of show that repetition interval. So the peak, that spectral peak that we're looking at here pops up here in time and here in time. A difference of about 96 microseconds. Okay, So now, now that we know that, uh, we can go and look you know, on the board for something that is repeating at that rate and maybe try to isolate what might be causing that event. And I had already done some probing around on this board and what I had found was there's this, uh, this header called USB HS or a high speed USB port. If I go and move my probe over to there and uh, take a look up on the scope, I can see that I've got this burst of data that's occurring at that same rate. Okay, let's do a single shot capture on this. And you'll notice if we kind of scroll the, uh, 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 the spectrum time around, I can see that in between here, that peak we're looking at is kind of dropped down. If we kind of get back onto this uh, high speed data burst right here, there it is, it popped right back up again. Let's go look at that one over there. I'll scroll all the way over there and look at that one. When I get up there, boom, guess what? That's, that, pipe, that spike comes right back up again. So what we found is that on this board, you know, in this area of the board, we're emitting the signal at, oh, let's see, let's throw a marker on, the, on there, at about 137 megahertz, okay? That's popping up by 10 or 15 dB, okay? Each time this USB HS uh, burst is being transmitted, and we can do things like zooming in and you know under, taking a look at what that data looks like. But there's a quick example of being able to use some of the tools and multi-multi-domain capability in the uh, mixed domain oscilloscope to track down some kind of a transient uh, problem that might cause you to have some EMI compliance issues.